for you also, and he's going to talk to you about peer-to-peer -peer tutoring. In exactly 10 minutes. Tutor Math Camp. Good afternoon. It's great to see you guys. Uh, so I just started my timer, and I'm Benjamin Walker, and uh, to help me, uh, before I get started with peer-to-peer -peer math partnerships, uh, which I'm very excited to share with you, I just want to start with gratitude. That's one of my favorite things. Um, helps me feel grounded, and it's it's just, the gratitude is so overwhelming that I just feel like I need to share it. And, and a quick shout out to Jennifer, who's my mentor. Uh, Hashtag best mentor ever, and also my um, unofficial mentor, Courtney. But then also uh, my roommate, which is Carl, this guy. Where we, uh, yeah, word. Um, because he's literally, I mean, you can, yeah, you can clap for him, but I'm just excited because he's literally helping me start a blog today. Um, so if that's, if that's not a good roommate, I don't know what it is. Uh, so now that I feel a little better, um, I want to share with you some of my goals, my Two of my goals this year are, are these two bands. Um, and it's crazy because um, Peter is here, right? Aren't you here, Peter? Um, anyway, uh, this, what I want to share with you has to do with equity and, and agency ownership and identity. Um, and so these math partnerships. Um, so there's five steps that I've found work uh, pretty well. And I want to share with you the work that I've done in the past um, in the past year and, and kind of where this is going. Um, so at my school, the students come in with a variety, a wide range of experiences and foundational math. And so one of the things that I'm always interested in is giving an opportunity or creating structure such that every student has opportunities to develop mathematical power and leadership and contribute to the community. These are all things that I really value and spend a lot of my time thinking about how I can how I can support and enable that uh, in my students. So um, this is one of those things. So there's five steps to this. Um, and, it, and it's these math partnerships, and, I, and I'm just like um, Cat, Cat Glass, Glass and Tote, I'm trying to not shy away from this idea of tutoring because part of what I want to do is, is help normalize giving and receiving support and help in the math class at, at school. Um, so uh, the, the steps that I want to talk about are these five. Um, identify the people, like get the right people on the bus, create a regular time and space, coach them, then get out of the way, and also share with the stakeholders. So this first idea about identifying students, um, it's important to point out uh, that all of the students who are a part of this partnership program opt in both to receive help and to support and give help. Um, and, and how do I get those people on the board? Well, I start with a lot of this. Um, typically it goes with a student like, hey, I recognize that you're struggling right now. And I recognize you as competent and you have the potential to be very mathematically powerful. What can we do to get you to where you can be? And, and often they're grateful and relieved that I reached out to them. And then I'm like, is one-on-one -on -one help the type of thing that you would want? Because, right, don't we all have a bunch of students who could really use and benefit from one-on-one -on -one help? But, like, I, I had 26 students' partnerships in the program this year, and I can't meet with a student one-on-one, -on -one, 26 students one-on-one -on -one every week at the same time, right? But what this program aims to do is get, like, amazing students, right? And we all have a ton of them, um, to get the support to the students that we need. So, um... I, I think a lot about Ilana Horn. Oh, you're here, aren't you? Oh, she left. That's okay. I love you. Um, <laughs> uh, she. I, I think a lot about how how status plays into giving and receiving help, and who has the mathematical power. And so it's important that when I talk to these students about getting power or, or joining the program, so that they can become a part of it. One of the explicit goals is if you're a 2T now, I'm going to use tutor and 2T, right? 2Ts are the ones receiving help. Uh, one of the explicit goals is to become a tutor over time, right? So that you shift that and you you change your identity and you grow in your in your identity as a math doer. Um, and then, I, you know, thanks, Kat, because I, I want to... In the past, I actually had talked to these students one-on-one. -on -one. Now I'm not going to. I'm going to bring them all into the room like she suggested and say, hey, like, you guys are all awesome and you have a place to go. Uh, let's do it together and you can support each other. The same with the students that I asked to help and to step up to be those tutors. Um, I recognize you as mathematically powerful and also 
Like you have good social skills, people look up to you, you've demonstrated leadership in the class, will you do this? But I think a lot about who I ask, right? And so I make sure that especially the tutors reflect the diversity of the student body and maybe even lean towards marginalized students because that's a great opportunity for them to contribute something to the community. Um, so then this is some from student data that I got um, at the end of the year. So how did you feel about this? And, and I had them all respond, but these are just a couple. And this idea of being embarrassed is big. I, I really need, like, help me think about that um, as we continue this conversation. But we'll look at the data about how they felt at the end later on. Um, so create a regular time and space. It just really helps if it's the same place, same time, every day, once a week, so that it's that regular regularity that they can get used to. Um, and then what I found is it's really helpful if the student partnerships are in the same classroom. So two geometry students that are in the same fifth period class, and they're working together because that level of accountability that I can have with them is really helpful. Um, and then you gotta coach them, right? So like basically what we're training them to do is become teachers, both of them. Even the ones that are getting help right now, we, we want them to become a tutor, and we wanna do a lot, and, and I think we talked about this a lot in like the student discourse, we did this today, is like ask questions that respect their opportunity to build understanding for themselves. How do you do that? I mean, like, that's what we are all doing as a profession, like a whole life goal of asking the right questions all the time. So we're helping our students do that. That takes some coaching, it takes some time to build good questioning habits. But we think a lot about that. Um, one thing that I'm doing this year is I'm having my veteran students from last year run all of the coaching sessions. They're the ones in charge of showing uh, the new students, well, the responsibilities of each party, what you're supposed to do as a 2T and a tutor. Um, statement and question stems, we spend a lot of time because it's just a lot of talking. Hopefully they've done the math up front and so they really have to pick it apart and discuss. So some, some statement stems that we use because the, the rule is actually the tutor is only allowed to ask questions. The tutor can never do math or explain math. The tutor can only ask questions. So all the talking has to be done by the 2T. And so they start with things like, well, I do understand this, or I got this because, and they have a lot of the burden, the responsibility of all the talking. Um, what we do with the tutors is we together develop question stems that make sense, that are not like Jeopardy questions where it's like giving the answer in the form of the question. We want to shy away from that. We spend a lot of time building good quality questions like, what's the definition of, do you know a related theorem? These are all problem solving heuristics that we borrow from Polya and then we try to implement here. But also like, can you say more about that? Just open ended things to help them, uh, the two T's build their understanding. Um, and then you gotta get out of the way, but support. Um, these are two of my, uh, this, these are two of the tutoring partners that are gonna help me run the sessions this year. They're gonna be the coaches, um, Amina and Danilo. And so basically watch and learn. I learn a ton about how to be a great teacher from watching students talk to each other. And I'll just sit there at the same table with them and I do it so much it, it gets less awkward. I don't know if I can ever be less awkward, but it, it gets better after a while. And then um, just like Ilana says, where we assign competence, you wanna point positive to behaviors that we want them to replicate over time. These are the things that help us learn. And, and, and she's really clear about like, you say why the behavior helps us learn. Like point positive to the behavior and, and explain why it's helpful. Um, and then a build a community that runs itself, right? Like ideally I want the students to run this eventually. Uh, so then, now that they've completed the program, how do they feel? And it turns out like pretty good. And so this is almost enough, even if, like this is almost enough to me. Um, it really helped me grade, it would be useful to a lot of people, they felt grateful, like there's a lot of really positive feedback about this. Um, not all positive feedback though, there's one kid that just really didn't like, and we gotta, you know, it's, it's not gonna work for everybody, but it was close. Um, so this is all interesting. These are four questions that I asked. I enjoyed working in the tutoring partnership. Helped me feel more confident, so this is for the two T's. Enabled me to pass more outcomes. And earned a higher grade. And, and it's interesting, those are all different questions, but I think they're all important metrics about a program like this. Uh, but in general, it seemed really good. Um, oh, and then this is one where that I asked both of them, um, and that's pretty exciting. Contribute something meaningful. Um, the last thing is that you share with stakeholders. So this is how I, I took care of it, or like I, I measured it all. Um, so what's cool about this this line with uh, like the ones and twos and zeros, and then there's one five. Um, this is how many uh, outcomes they had proficient when they earned or when they started the program, which is like 
ridiculously low. It ended up being out of uh, 14, I think. And then this is how many they ended at the end of the year. These are the students and the partnerships, when they meet and all that. So I track that, and then I update it over time. And then I have a spreadsheet where I, if you've done standardized grading, it's kind of a lot of spreadsheets, but this <laughs> populates. Um, and, so, and so the good news is, in addition to all the data where they, the students said they felt like they were a part of something meaningful that helped them, every single student who had an F or a D when they started this program um, ended with a B or an A by the end of the year. Um, and there was one student that got a C, but man, that was close. And so I, I would also say in terms of like when students are learning, we're winning, that's a big success. Um, so that's my last, I, I really appreciate your time and I'd love to, I mean, get at me, right? Be Walker Q, so like, I'm sure you have questions and ideas that can help me grow this, and I'm doing it again, but it's gonna be harder because students are running it. So I really appreciate your ideas. This is my first time at TMC. I don't even have a blog yet, but I'm gonna blog about it, so like, I wanna be vulnerable, like, like Fletcher was talking about yesterday, and, and I love your feedback and criticism and help, because just like you, I wanna grow. Thanks so much.